believe it or not, it was actually raining. It's sunny now and it looks like some of the clouds stuck around. And with that in mind, what's going on today? I guess usually when it's raining and sunny, there would be a rainbow. But how about this one? Apparently there's a drone dubbed as a rainbow. It says, made in flight for new UAV in China's first solar drone program, Rainbow. An updated model of the Rainbow 4 unmanned aerial vehicle, one of China's first solar drone series, has completed its maiden flight. Its developer, China Aerospace Science Technology Corporation, announced on Wednesday. The solar-powered UAV named Kai Hong, or Rainbow in English, is domestically designed and manufactured by a research team from the 11th Academy Aerospace Rainbow UAV Co. Ltd. under CASTC. China is the third country to have a working solar-powered drone that can reach near-space heights following Helios and the US and Zephyr of the UK. It says flying up to 20,000 meters high, the Rainbow UAV reached an altitude of 20,000 meters during a test flight in the country's northwest regions in 2017. The team behind the aircraft said the drone flew smoothly in near space for over 15 hours, completing its scheduled path and landing securely afterwards. Near space is a region of Earth's atmosphere that lies between 20 and 100 kilometers above sea level, an area where air is too thin for traditional fuel-powered planes. Solar drones are able to overcome these problems because they are powered by the sun. Li Guangjian, director of the Rainbow Project, said China's solar drone will be able to fly for extended periods of time. And with more, I guess, innovation news, how about this one? It says FAA awards $2.7 million for emergency response drone research. Universities around the United States are researching drone implementations in emergency response and disaster preparedness with the aid of $2.7 million in security research grants from the Federal Aviation Administration. It says here, quote, every second counts in an emergency, and this funding will allow drones to safely and more quickly deploy in moments when minutes matter, said acting FAA Administrator Billy Nolan. And they show you all the universities here who got the funding and so forth. More innovation is better. It just comes down to things again like regulations and all that where not people could actually use it to innovate or is it going to be illegal when someone tries to create let's just say a quote drone in their backyard nope it's illegal for you to try that i mean to me it's still over the top overall and this was kind of interesting to think about apparently there's a group of sort who does not like the police having access to drones and so forth and some of the details they used which made me think how common is this really it says here, tell Mayor Frey and Council no drones for MPD without public oversight. It says, we strongly object to the Minneapolis Police Department's proposal to purchase and use drones. So from what I gather from reading this, they're saying there's various incidents where the police were untrustworthy. For example, saying what? It's currently under investigation by both the MN Department of Human Rights and the US Department of Justice for violations of civil rights. With that thought with the drones, it says here on why they fear a police officer or a crooked one per se, if they used it, it says, drones often possess highly advanced surveillance capabilities with some versions equipped with cameras that can scan entire cities or alternatively zoom in and read a milk carton from 60,000 feet. Okay, this is no off-the-shelf consumer drone you're talking about as an example. It says, while drones may have some legitimate use cases, they drastically shift the balance of power between the public and law enforcement and pose a serious threat to our essential human rights to privacy, peaceful protests, and free speech. Given the MPD's history and technology's potential for abuse, we urge the mayor and the council to halt the process of MPD acquiring drones until such time as the city has in place a comprehensive oversight framework for regulating all surveillance and military technology. So would you agree in that sense? Let them use drones? No, because it's just some bad apples. There's multiple sides of the argument. In my opinion, if you allow them to use, let's say, helicopters with high-powered cameras and so forth, I don't see the difference in that aspect because it's just, I guess, cheaper per se. So it's more about just establishing basic rules and all that. I mean, even with helicopters, there's stories of literally police officers using them to be like a snoop so to speak like perverts that has happened in the past i don't think that stops them overall from using it in other situations for myself personally what would make me a little iffy is if they say they're allowed to use this here and there but they ban everyone else let's just say 
like here, people were having a protest, for some reason they could use it to monitor everybody, but then you won't allow some average person to document the situation as well to make sure, let's just say, the police are doing a proper job and all that. That is what I would worry if you say, hey, this side could use this, the other side they can't in certain circumstances. I can see if there's a quote security issue, but if the person is just capturing images or videos, then in my opinion, that should be fine for both parties per se. That's my thought anyways, it should be fair in that aspect. Because in terms of things like rights and so forth, I guess apparently in Canada it says there's an interim ban on handguns. It says Canada's interim ban on handgun imports now in effect. A long-term import freeze not expected to be approved until fall. As of today, individuals and businesses are no longer able to import restricted handguns into Canada with limited exceptions. The move announced earlier this month is aimed at expediting a key pillar of the federal effort to cap the number of handguns in the country. In May, the Liberal government announced a plan to implement a freeze on importing, buying, selling, or otherwise transferring handguns in order to help quell firearm-related violence. The measure is part of a broader firearms control package that would allow for the automatic removal of gun licenses from people committing domestic violence or engaged in criminal harassment, such as stalking, as well as increased maximum penalties for gun smuggling and trafficking to 14 years from 10. My personal thought again, as a person who doesn't use a gun, I don't feel any safer, honestly, because just from thinking about this, is it really going to do much in terms of a law-abiding citizen? Like what happens if someone uses a gun illegally or they bring it in somewhere else illegally? What are you doing to stop that? I think that is the big issue, isn't it? So overall, again, just for me as a regular individual, I don't feel safer overall. It's the same question for even things like a drone. Is it actually making things safer or does it just take people's rights away? That's what I would wonder personally, even if I don't use the stuff myself. Alright, see you guys later.